Welcome everyone to Office 365 for Nonprofits, an introduction. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm an Interactive Events Producer here at TechSoup Global, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Before we get started with the content, I'd like to just take a couple of moments to get you ready with using ReadyTalk. You should be hearing the audio through your computer speakers. I'll give a brief introduction to who TechSoup is while we're getting restarted here. We are a nonprofit, and we are part of TechSoup Global. We are working toward the day when every nonprofit, social benefit organization, and library on the planet has the knowledge and resources they need to meet their mission. And so part of that is providing webinars like this, writing articles, sending out newsletters, having donation programs for different products, and working with you to help make sure you've got access to experts who can help you make the best decisions for your technology. We are operating in 56 different countries around the world. So if you're not located in the United States, some of the information on today's webinar may not apply to you, but there may be an organization in your host country or in your home country that can help you access donation programs like what we're talking about today. We will be joined by two excellent speakers today. One is James Rooney from from Microsoft who will be talking a little bit about what Office 365 is. He will be giving us a higher level overview of what it's for, how it works, and what the offer is from Microsoft. We are really excited about this offer here at TechSoup because it's been a long time that we've hoped to be able to connect people with the donation of a cloud office. So we are really excited about Microsoft's generous offer to the nonprofit sector both in the United States and around the world. So he'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll hand off to Linda Widdop who is joining us from Tech Impact. And she is located in Pennsylvania where they used to be called Empower PA or Pennsylvania. And she helps walk nonprofits through the process of deciding how and whether and when to upgrade to the cloud when they want to migrate to the cloud and use something like Office 365. So she'll be showing us some screenshots and some highlights of the different applications that are available in Office 365, and, um, and then talking a little bit about the considerations and their process of implementation and their process of working with organizations to make that sort of decision. So once I can get back started here, I will go ahead and take you, take you to them and get us started with a poll question. Um, if your chat window is working, you're welcome to chat into us. We are interested in knowing if you are already using Office 365 or not. So if you have already installed it, or if you're using a free trial, if you're a pro, if you are just curious and trying to decide if maybe this is something you're interested in. And that will help our presenters today to be able to know whether or not they should keep this really high level or whether you need a little bit more in-depth expertise. Um, I will say that this is the first of three webinars that we'll be presenting on Office 365 this fall. So as this one is being presented as an introduction, we are planning to keep it fairly high level as an introduction. So if you're an Office 365 Pro and using it every day like an expert, and just have some in-depth questions, this may not be the best place today to get those questions answered. You are always welcome to ask them though, and we can try and follow up in our community forums. If however you are just getting started or just curious, this is a great place to see a walkthrough. Um, we won't be doing a live demo because those often have tech issues, which seems to be the case. So we will be um, showing mostly screenshots of different applications and letting you get a taste for what is included in Office 365. Our second webinar, which you'll get a link to is going to be on October 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And that one will be again with Linda Widdop from Tech Impact who will be walking us through the process of deciding whether Office 365 is right for your nonprofit. And so that one will be more of a discussion of the process, the considerations, the things that you need to decide upon um, when you go through making this decision. 
And then we will have another one on October 22nd, which we don't have quite ready to promote. So you won't get a link to it today, but we'll follow up with you with a link to it. And that one will be a walk through the process of getting the donation through Microsoft and looking at the different pricing and options available if you want a discounted version with more bells and whistles. So with that, I'm sorry I haven't been able to advance the slides for you yet, but hey, I'd like to go hey, ahead Becky? and introduce – yep. Hi, it's Linda. I can advance the slides. Great. Thank you, Linda. I'm glad you are still in <laughs> the just, room. <laughs> we just figured that out. So um, I'm on the agenda slide now if you wanted to okay, start great. at that. Right? Did you want to sure. go through your TechSoup slides? Nope, that's fine. I've already kind of introduced TechSoup, and since this has eaten up a bunch of our time, I'd like to go ahead and if you want to click on the poll just to let people respond to that so we can see what the percentage is, then okay. that will let people actually vote so I can see what the responses are and we can use that information a little bit um, throughout the webinar if we need. Great. And folks um, can just so click on the – go ahead. Yeah, I have that up. And for everyone who answered in chat whether you were using Office 365 or not, go ahead and select that on your poll slide. You should see a poll slide now. Um, I'll give you about uh, – what do you usually give, Becky, about 10 seconds, 15 seconds? Yeah, you know what, and actually it just popped up. So I'm finally in the room as a uh, back cool. as the chairperson. So thank you so much, Linda, for advancing slides All right. while I couldn't. All right, you're in control. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, everybody. Feel free to click on those links on your screen and let us know where you're at with Office 365. And then I'll go ahead and hand off to James to really get us started with the meat of our content. So it looks like 40% are no, and about 40% are wanting to learn more first. So, so that's great. You are all the perfect audience for today's nonprofit introduction. With that, I'd like to go ahead and formally introduce James Rooney. He's joining us from Microsoft today who will give us an overview of what is Office 365. Welcome, James. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. How are you doing? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is James Rooney. I, I help manage our Technology for Good program here at Microsoft, and that has to do with a lot of different things, part of which is the uh, donation side of uh, the products and services that we have. So I'm going to go over just a really super high level of what Office 365 is, talk about what our specific Office 365 for nonprofit offer entails, and then hand it over to Linda to get into some more of the details. So um, whoever is controlling the slides, if you could just bump it forward once, please. Thank you. Uh, so really as this, cloud uh, as this cloud, as this slide says, and better than I ever could really, it's Office 365 is really your complete office in the cloud. So everything that you know and love about your current Office applications, so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, etc., basically it's the same except in the cloud. Right? So you get all the benefits of being able to kind of be familiar with those applications and use those applications, but you don't have to have them installed on your desktop. They're in the cloud, accessible from anywhere um, via any device. And so what you also get is in addition to those applications that you, that you uh, know and use every day, you get um, professional email essentially. So your email is now in the cloud. It doesn't have to be you know, an Outlook application on your desktop. You also get shared calendaring, which I know is really kind of – I find that very exciting. I think it's one of the features that most organizations and uh, companies that use Office 365 seem to enjoy <laughs> the most, um, to be able to see what other um, people in your organization are up to and when they're up to it on their calendars. So you can share that information and you don't have to send back and forth emails kind of explaining you know, who's available and when. You also get instant messaging and video conferencing, screen sharing, and online storage. And that's really all about uh, collaboration. So what Office 365 really does is not only gets you the applications that you want in the cloud so they're no longer on your desktop, but it also allows you to more easily collaborate with other people in your organization whether they're sitting in the office next to you or across the country, across the world. You can do some joint editing of documents, storing of documents in the cloud, uh, screen sharing and instant messaging and video conferencing that really help that collaboration. Um, and so you guys can really do what you need to do and do it more effectively. So that's really what Office is, uh, Office 365. Um, and it's, it's just basically the office that you know and love in the cloud with all that extra stuff along with it. Uh, so if you can kick the slide one forward again, please. Great. And so 
really what the Office 365 for nonprofits offer is. It's, it's a donated uh, office licenses to your organization, right? So it's, it's eligible to 501c3 organizations. There are some restrictions as with every good uh, offer. You know, there are the restrictions and eligibility requirements. You can find more. I'll provide a link where you can find more information. But it's really the same eligibility requirements that you already see on TechSoup pretty much apply to the Office 365 for Nonprofits offer. Uh, it's, it's in 42 countries at launch. We just recently launched this, and so it's at 42 countries now, expanding to 90 uh, soon. So it will continue to roll out to more and more countries. So if your country is not included yet, please go to the links that I'll provide on uh, the next slide. Check out when, if your country is uh, currently has it, or if it's if it doesn't, actually, can you go back one slide? Um, and then you can, thanks. And then you'll be able to check and see if your country is currently eligible and when it will be eligible. And so really what the offer is, there's two big offers, right? So there's donated enterprise, which is called E1, and a discounted upgrade to enterprise 3. Uh, and, and those unlimited seats, so if your organization is 3 people, 10 people, 3,000 people, it doesn't matter unlimited seats for both of those. And so it's the difference between E1 and E3, they're, they're quite similar. You can, again, the, the web links that I'll share in just a minute, you can really dive into the nitty-gritty details of what the differences are. But for E E1 and E3, E3 you really get, in addition to the web applications, you also get desktop applications as well as some, um, as well as some uh, additional Excel and Access and Visio services and forms and things like that, some additional on-premise service integration, and some uh, archiving and legal uh, elements associated with your email. So it's really it, it, they're very quite similar, and with E3 you just get a couple extra um, kind of bonuses along with that, and that is an upgrade cost of four dollars and fifty cents a seat. That is a discounted price from the normal price of E3. So we we think that the donated enterprise E1 will probably be just fine for most organizations, but for those with very specific needs, there is that reduced cost to bump up to the E3 enterprise. And so you know with the with the uh, storage and the email, so with SkyDrive. Pro, which comes with this, you get 25 gigabytes of storage for free. There is, there are options to upgrade. I think to about 100, 100 gigabytes. Sorry, I think I said megabytes. 25 gigabytes of storage. You can upgrade to 100 gigabytes for a little extra cost with SkyDrive Pro. So that's all your online storage, uh, as well as your email. I believe you get about 50 gigabytes of storage as well in there. So should be plenty of storage to um, handle most of the email that you'll you'll need. So this is really the the offer for the nonprofits. And if you can go to the next slide. So these are really three resources uh, that are, are going to be extremely useful for you to learn more about this. So the Microsoft.com slash Office 365 Nonprofits. You can go to that website. You can find out what's available, what the eligibility requirements are, and you can sign up right from this uh, right from this location. It's pretty. It's a. It's kind of a really easy three-step process. This website really has all the information you need uh, to to figure out what if you need E1 or E3, and to sign up your organization for Office 365. And then once you do sign up for Office 365, we, there are some brand new uh, resources for organizations rolling this out, as well as for the people within this organization trying to learn how to use Office 365. There are these really two good resources that have just been launched, and there's links to those in there that, are, that should help your organization as you start to roll this out once you've signed up. So that's really the gist on the Office 365 for nonprofit offer. I know Linda will go into a lot more of the details about you know, the nitty-gritty of what Office 365 is and some of the features and functionality and all that stuff. So I will hand it off to Linda. Great. You know what, before Linda jumps in, we had one question that popped yeah. up oh, sure. that I think is a good question for you before we move on. There's sure. a question asking, can the licenses between E1 and E3 be split on the same organization? Like could you have some people using the donated version and some people using the upgraded version within the same org? I believe so. I believe you can yes. – um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. I love having the triumphant yes <laughs> coming in from the background. So that answers that. So with that, we can go ahead and hand over to Linda to get us a 
big picture overview and show us a look at Office 365. And for those of you who are asking questions, we are grabbing them all on the back end, and we will have them for Q&A later on as well. Thanks, Becky. Um, hi, everyone. I am Linda Whitup. I am the Director of Technology Services at um, Tech Impact. I'm the one with the glasses and the collared shirt on, not the one with the dog collar on in the photo. Just to be clear, thank you very much. Um, our Tech Impact started at NPower Pennsylvania back in 2002. We are a nonprofit organization based in Philadelphia. And our mission is to make sure that all of you, you nonprofits in the world can use technology to better serve your own mission. Um, so we are a technology company, and all we do is focus on other nonprofits. So we recently changed our name to Tech Impact, and with that we are also expanded our service delivery area to include um, all of North America, and we're actually moving towards global service as well. So to date, we've assisted more than 500 organizations to move their existing email and file sharing and collaboration from whatever system they had to Microsoft Office 365. We've been doing this for um, over three years. It's back before Office 365 had that name. It was called BPOS. We were doing it. So I'm here today to give you a big picture overview of what Microsoft Office 365 is and also to talk a little bit about what you should know before you jump into um, trying to do your implementation. So real quick, uh, big picture, this is Office 365 is a Microsoft hosted solution, and it has your email, your calendar, your contacts, your files, your shared calendars, um, all of that in the cloud. And what you do is you access that cloud from a web-enabled device. And that could be your desktop computer in your office. It could be your laptop connected to the Internet. It could be a tablet computer. It could also be your smartphone. All of your things are stored in the cloud, and you're just accessing it from wherever you're connected to the Internet. One of the big um, benefits of using Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft was generous enough to give us a behind-the-scenes slide, and this is what the cloud looks like. Um, the cloud is nothing more than a warehouse filled with things that look like container trucks. Um, inside those container trucks, are rows and rows and rows of servers. And Microsoft takes care of all of this stuff. So um, there's data centers like this all over the country and all over the world. And your information is stored somewhere on these servers uh, and replicated across different servers, across different containers, and across different sites so that you're always available so there's a 99.9 something availability, which means that hopefully the service never goes down. Um, it's replicated across sites. So you don't have to worry about all this stuff. Let Microsoft do it for you. That's what I like. Um, so as James pointed out earlier, Microsoft Office 365 has a lot of different components to it. One of them is hosted exchange-based email. And what that means is that on one of those servers that you saw on the last slide is an Exchange server that deals out your email. And that Exchange server gives all of your users a 50 gigabyte email box. 50 gigabyte email box is huge. It's bigger than any email box you've ever had in your whole entire life. Um, your email is accessible either through Microsoft Outlook, and um, Microsoft Outlook, we like to have tw uh, 2010 as a minimum. 2013 works even better. Microsoft will tell you that 2007 also works, which it will. However, they will retire that product or uh, support for that product 
soon. So if you need to do an upgrade before you move to Office 365, go ahead and get yourself to 2010 at a minimum, and 2013 would be preferable. Um, so you can access your inbox from Microsoft Outlook. You can access your inbox from Outlook Web App. Microsoft has, so you can just type in your browser, www.office365.com, put your username and password in, and get to your email box. The nice thing about this, for those of you who don't already have Exchange, you'll know that sometimes when you're in your Outlook inbox, you have everything the way you like it. All your folders are there, and the saved mail is there, and messages that you've read or unread are right there. Then when you go to your web app, it's all different. Well, not with Microsoft Office 365. It all looks the same. So if you've saved an email in a folder, you can get to it no matter where you are. You can get to it through the web app, www.office365.com. You can get to it in Outlook. And you can get to it with any ActiveSync supported mobile phone. That includes the iPhone. It includes Android phones. And of course it includes Windows smartphones. Microsoft wants you to use Windows smartphones as a default product. But it will work on all of these other devices. So that's really great news for your email. Here's what Outlook looks like. You get additional features. So for those of you who never had an Exchange server, if you don't know what I'm talking about, chances are it's because you don't have one. Um, an Exchange server allows you to do higher level things with your Outlook and your um, inbox, such as setting out of office messages so that you can go right from Outlook or from Outlook Web App and set your out of office message so that people get that you know, um, on vacation bit. Um, it allows you to share your calendar with your coworkers. This is a huge benefit over regular email. When we have our calendars here at Tech Impact, we share it out with coworkers. Our coworker can actually open my any of my coworkers can open my calendar, see where I am, add an appointment for me, move an appointment or delete an appointment for me at any time. And that's our that's what we decided to do here at Tech Impact, and it really works well for us. Another thing is presence. Presence comes with out with Office 365. So that if you've got something on your calendar and you and a coworker opens up um, an email and tries to email you something, it'll show you as red, meaning something's on your calendar, or green. That's really great for distributed office workers. So if you have the kind of nonprofit where you've got people in the field or you've got nine offices spread across the state of Oklahoma, and you're not right in the next cube with someone, you, you're kind of more connected to them if you're using the Outlook, um, if you're using Outlook calendars and presence management. Uh, just a word real quick about me. If you're chatting me, I can't chat you back right now while I'm talking. I am not coordinated enough. So I'll get to your questions in a minute. Um, so Microsoft Office 365 comes with Exchange-based email, which is a really nice thing, 50 gigabyte uh, mailbox. It also comes with SharePoint Online. SharePoint Online allows you to set up an intranet website for you and your coworkers to collaborate on all kinds of documents and all kinds of data and information. Um, it includes document storage so that you can have a shared folder experience. So this is, um, you can put all of your files there, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, pictures, you could put PDFs there, you could put all kinds of files there. And then setting permissions, the administrator would set permissions, allowing different people, different coworkers to have certain access to those document libraries. The really cool thing about the document library is that it's more robust than having files sit on your file server. If you're in an organization now 
where you've got files on the server and you have a P drive or an S drive or a G drive, all you do is see a static list of, of um, documents to access. If we put those online in SharePoint online, you access those via a web page. So not only do you see the documents, but you also see info other information related to those documents, such as a calendar of events. Maybe you've got a training component to your organization. You could have a training calendar online. And right next to the training calendar, you could have all of those documents that pertain, like the registration um, list or the uh, attendee sign-in sheet or the PowerPoint that the instructor is going to use during the training event. All of that is right in the same area. Accessing those files on SharePoint, you can do that. Let's take PowerPoint as an example. You have a PowerPoint presentation that you need to edit. You can open up PowerPoint on your local computer, navigate to the SharePoint site, open it up and work on it. Or you could just go to the SharePoint site with any Internet connected device, open up that PowerPoint presentation right online without having PowerPoint even loaded on the machine that you are working at, and do basic edits to the PowerPoint presentation online. And you could call your coworker and say, I'm editing the PowerPoint now. They could log into the same PowerPoint presentation at the same time that you are and see the changes that you're making and make changes along with you. That's the collaboration part. That's what you can't do now with your shared files. Um, so SharePoint has document storage. It's got an information portal. It's got the web apps that I just um, gave you the PowerPoint example for, and integration to Office 2013, meaning you can connect directly to SharePoint, open that PowerPoint presentation right on your desktop. This is a game changer, folks. This is what makes uh, Office 365 the tool for you to use in your, in your office environment. So add SharePoint to this 50 gigabyte e email box that you have, ability to share calendars. You've just solved 80% of your office, um, your goals for your office right there. But wait, there's more. SkyDrive. Uh, my Office 365, as, as uh, James pointed out earlier, comes with SkyDrive Pro. SkyDrive Pro is personal storage. Each one of your users gets a 25 gigabyte SkyDrive Pro account which means all of that stuff that doesn't need to be shared with your coworkers. This is stuff that's in your My Documents folder or that stuff that you usually lay all over your computer desktop. Put it in SkyDrive. Here's, what, here's the benefit. SkyDrive syncs to your computer, so any changes that you make on that document that's still laying all over your desktop gets automatically synced to SkyDrive, which means that if you break your computer somehow, your hard drive crashes, you drop your laptop into the pool, um, guess what? You haven't lost that document because it's on your SkyDrive. So it kind of acts like a backup of all your stuff. Plus, you can get to all that stuff if you're away from your computer. So even if your computer is not broken, you might be somewhere in somebody else's office or at your mother-in-law's house and they say, oh, uh, I want to show you the picture that I had. Guess what? It's right on SkyDrive and you can get to it from anywhere as long as your mother-in-law has an inter Internet connection. So SkyDrive comes. It's 25 gigabytes of personal storage with that. It also comes with Newsfeed. This is connected to the SharePoint site. You can have a, or connected to Office 365, I mean, you can have a news feed. If you're in a larger organization where you kind of don't know everybody, or you've got those nine office sites that are spread across Oklahoma, um, you can do a news feed to keep all of your employees engaged with each other and updated on projects. You can set this up. The way you set this up is you create a personal profile. Here's a, a sample of Carlos. He's handsome. He's a handsome devil. 
Um, so Carlos puts up his own personal uh, profile. He tells his coworkers not only who he is, but what projects he's working on, maybe what special skills he's got. And then you can set up so that you can follow either Carlos or you can follow a project that Carlos is working on or anything like that. And it's kind of, again, that collaboration or that team, pardon me, that team collaboration concept. So that's a, it's a pretty cool feature as well. Um, the next feature in Office 365 is Microsoft Link. And Microsoft spelled this L-Y-N-C. Um, so Microsoft Link does presence management. It does group chat. It does presentation mode and web app. So this is the application that kind of um, pulls information from your Outlook calendar to tell your coworkers whether you're available to meet with them or not or chat or whatever. It allows you to instant message chat with coworkers. Again, this is nice for that large organization. Or even like in my office, they put me in some corner office here that I can't see everybody. So, and I'm too lazy to get up. So what do I do? I chat them all day. Um, so I chat and I get quicker answers than having to try to figure out where everybody is. But Link also allows you to do a couple of other cool things. It allows you to share your desktop and do a web meeting. So you've got a board meeting coming up. You know how it is. Half of your board members can't make it on site for that board meeting. You can actually set up a link meeting and share out a presentation so that the board member, no matter where they are, as long as they're connected to the Internet, what they can do is they can actually see that presentation that you're giving at the board meeting. They can see the budget. They can see all that stuff. You can also include video in that. So if you wanted to, you could have your board members show up via video, similar to Skype, um, so that you can have that more personal interaction with them. So they can get audio and video right through the link um, right through the link presentation. So with that, I think I'm going to stop for um, a second and talk and find out if I'm missing any of the um, chat questions. So just give me one second. Sure, Linda. We've had a lot of activity in the chat window, so you may not even want to bother trying to scroll up. Oh, okay. There's a lot All there. right. Um, Is there anything we've had a lot up? Sure. We had a lot of questions, kind of a theme bubbled up around security. How safe is it? What if you mm -hmm. have an employee that's terminated? How do you restrict their access after the fact? Um, mm -hmm. you know, is the NSA going to be spying on your 50 gigabytes of data? <laughs> so some, <laughs> some sort of tongue-in-cheek, but also sort of scary mm -hmm. and true. Um, but also right. just general concern about security in the cloud. So can you sure. speak to that a little bit? Um, I can. Uh, I can speak to that as much as I am not a Microsoft employee, so I, you know, I, I can't give the toe of the Microsoft line here, but I can tell you that um, Microsoft is compliant with all of the normal regulations that you can imagine, those ISO things and those HIPAA things and all of that. It is always up to the end user to make sure that they are compliant on their end. So just because Office 365 says that they meet HIPAA compliance doesn't mean that you're HIPAA compliant because you use it and you send patient information out to you know, your friends on Facebook. That's not Microsoft's fault. That's your fault. Um, but the data centers are secure. You get, when you're using the enterprise licenses, and this is um, something I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, when you're using the enterprise licenses, you get your own exchange set up by Microsoft. So Microsoft actually provisions your organization their own exchange, um, what do they call it, not tenant, but instance, which means that as an, an IT administrator, you have all of the ability to um, get right into the console, get right into the data store, and even use um, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, what's it called? Shell commands 
to do all kinds of things and set permissions and user accounts and everything. If, a, you, if one of your users is terminated, you just go into the Office 365 control panel and you know, do not disable the account or change the password or whatever you have to do. You can do all those things like forward emails to another user after the termination so that you, nobody's missing email and all that kind of stuff. So it's secure. Great. And Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, in that vein, are you able to change permissions on certain documents to have yep. some private, only viewable by certain people? So all of those settings are adjustable per document Absolutely. or per your folder of documents? Yep. You set your SharePoint permission. SharePoint is, is very permission driven. You can set it up so that a calendar can be viewed by some, not viewed by others. Somebody can set an appointment while others can view only, and all that same stuff on the document levels as well. You can set document library permissions, and you can actually set permissions right on documents as well. Great. Somebody asked if, um, and maybe this is a question for James, whether the servers that host Office 365 are all, all based in the U.S., or if, they're, if you know where those are at. Are there data centers in specific areas? Yeah, that's a good question. We do have data centers uh, around the world. Um, so uh, I believe that when you sign up, you can kind of indicate where you're, um, where you're located, and then it gets, all your stuff gets routed to the closest data center that is wherever you are. Okay. And then I know, you know part of that question sort of popped up the, the thought in my head of you know, disasters and things like that. And so is there backup of the backups of the data centers? So as far as security of your actual data, not just somebody trying to get to it or access it, but is, it, is there redundant backups for all of this? Yeah, most definitely. There is, not only do we have like 99 point whatever um, uptime, there is kind of backups on the backups on the backups of the data centers. So um, uh, you know, you're getting uptime and making sure that all your data that's there is not only just secure from an outside point of view, but won't just disappear, is, it shouldn't be a concern. Great. And I know that's something that we talk a lot about here at TechSoup is trying to remind people to back up their work and back up their data in two locations with two different people. And for small organizations, the cloud is actually often a much safer and more secure place for you to have a lot of your data depending on your clientele and who you serve. But you know, that's one of the recommendations that we've officially taken on is that cloud services can sometimes offer you a lot more security than what you can have in-house, especially if you don't have IT staff to help you manage it. We also, Linda had a couple of questions specific to Link, asking, is this a video conferencing tool? People want to understand a little bit more about what Link is and what it offers. Uh, so yes, Link can be used for video conferencing. It can be used to, uh, you can do audio and video through Link. Great. Um, we have some folks asking a little bit more complicated or high level tech questions about Active Directory services and user accounts. Is that handled by Microsoft in the cloud? Or is that something that individual no. organizations manage? Yes. Um, if you've got a, pretty sophisticated network and you need Active Directory synchronization to pass through authentication, um, we should, you should talk to a tech provider. We do a lot of talking to um, IT managers about whether or not it's a good idea, and if so, how to approach it. It's a complicated subject, one that we're not going to obviously dive into on our high-level view of Office 365 today. But I can certainly answer those questions offline. Everybody would have my contact information from the um, webinar today, so I can answer that offline. And we'll also give you um, some more information about another webinar that we might do. Right, Becky? Uh, Becky, we're doing two others. That might right, there get are two others coming up, technical. and the next one will be yeah. on October 10th. Um, exactly. So we have a lot of questions here, so I, you know, I don't know if you want to take more of the time to do that or if you want to proceed with the next couple of slides and then get into Q&A more. Yeah, let's go on with the, the next couple of slides and then finish up with questions because these slides might answer some questions. Sounds good. Okay, good. So um, as I said earlier, we've done uh, probably more than 500 Office 365 implementations. We've um, 
actually moved more than 200 on-premise exchange servers to Office 365. Uh, we've got 3,500 users. You know, we count up the licenses that we've uh, provisioned. No, we don't you know, actually do that. Microsoft does it. But the good news is no more servers on site to manage email. No more headaches about how, much, how are we going to replace that server every three, four, five, seven years. Um, no more worry about patching that and security patches and spam and antivirus filtering and backing up. That's all done by Microsoft. That takes all of that issue off the table for the on-premise uh, IT manager. We've also migrated more than 300 organizations from POP or IMAP email. This is the, um, this is the uh, local web mail that you might have been using. This is the Google mail. This is the Yahoo mail. We've moved those off to Office 365. Why? Because it's a better email system. If you're using Exchange Server, you're getting more, um, more features and functionality for your users to have. So that's a, a good thing as well. Um, our experience with SharePoint. We've, I don't know why that says dozens. It's more than dozens. We're just now getting into, um, over the past, I would say 10, 11 months, really heavily into the SharePoint implementation. Um, why? Because the, the, the nonprofits that we've helped move email have taken that first step. Let's get the email situated and squared away and then circle back with the SharePoint um, setup. So we do, we've helped with planning. Um, SharePoint requires your organization to really understand how you want your SharePoint instance to be laid out. What permissions do you want set? How many documents do you want to store online and what do they look like? Um, so it takes more thought on your end and then we can help you, you know, design that implement it, and then there's a lot of user training that, that is required. There's user training and ongoing support in order to be successful with SharePoint. But what, if you do it properly, it's really a, a, a wonderful um, addition to your uh, user's technology. We do a lot of project management. Planning is the key. We have to do planning for the email portion and the SharePoint portion. There's nothing new about that. Um, I was telling <laughs> James on the phone before the call, you know, a lot of organizations do, they do it ready, shoot, aim instead of um, the right way. So we try to make you think about the planning first. Uh, we do the email migration, get everybody acclimated to it. We keep it simple with SharePoint. We use out-of-the-box templates and functionality. We don't do any custom coding, and we don't recommend that you do any custom coding to begin with as well. Um, there's a lot that you can do with SharePoint. Um, we provide multiple training, and I think you should also. Um, and then plan for change management. You need to allot resources on your end to make sure that the implementation of Office 365 goes well and that there's somebody that's doing some, you know, care and feeding of the, of the um, instance, making sure that all the old user mailboxes are assigned to somebody else, somebody that understands how to go in and reset a password for a user, change a permission. All of those things are probably required to do that. Um, so this is our process. We work with your organization to understand your needs before you, we even go forward. I would recommend doing a quick consult um, even before you choose your licensing. As James said earlier, the E1 and the E3 licensing are available through the Microsoft offer. E1 gives you the 50 gigabyte mailbox, the 25 gigabyte SkyDrive Pro, SharePoint Online, Link Online. Um, the E3 has some additional features. Understanding what those additional features are so that you get the right licensing is great. That doesn't mean you can't change it later. I was an E1 license uh, user for almost four years. 
Last month, I just upgraded to E3. Why? Because I wanted the Office 365 mobile app for my iPhone. I can actually edit, uh, edit Excel documents and PowerPoint presentations right on my cell phone now. So it's awesome. Um, <laughs> we do full implementations. So we can, like you can pay us and we can do the implementation for you and with you. Or you can sign up for one of our workshop series. This is um, a do-it-yourself workshop series where we kind of give you the instructions and guidance and hold your hand and answer questions, but you actually do the work. Um, we provide ongoing support, and so there you have it. If you want more information about what we do, you can search NPOffice at TechSoup.org and get more information about us. So um, have any other big questions bubbled up that we want to answer? I know it's there are a lot of other I questions. Give time. Yep. Yeah, there are a lot of other questions, but I'd like to just say um, Tech Impact is one consultant that works with TechSoup and can work with you. They have an offer for a ten dollar assessment about whether to help you answer the questions for your organization about whether um, Office 365 is a good move for you and to help you sort of come up with some of those decisions around E3, E1, um, and can help answer some of those questions. We'll include a link to that in the follow-up email. We have a lot of other questions that I don't think we'll have time to get to all of them. But before we do that, I want to give a chance to Cameron Jones who is here at TechSoup with us just to talk about how to get it. So for folks who haven't tried it yet or haven't done the um, free trial, this is the process. So Cameron, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Cameron Jones. I work for TechSoup Global, and I've been working with Microsoft and Tech Impact on the launch of the Office 365 for nonprofits for several months now. Um, this offer is a little unique in that it's uh, it's you you request it differently than you request most Microsoft uh, software donations. Usually, you come to TechSoup, you go through the shopping cart experience of um, placing. Microsoft software donations in your cart, and you go through checkout through TechSoup. This is uh, a new um, a new way of doing a, a new way of accessing uh, cloud-based solutions, where you will be going directly to Microsoft. So you go to the Microsoft.com Office 365 for nonprofits uh, URL, which is on the slide, and you sign up for a free trial through Microsoft directly. You don't come through TechSoup at all for this. Um, you, go through, you go direct to Microsoft. You uh, must sign up for a free, tr free trial as part of the, uh, the onboarding process, and you'll be able to see the different options available there. Your eligibility as a nonprofit will be verified by TechSoup, but that all happens on the back end. And it's, um, it's not something that you will be contacted if we have any questions about your eligibility, about your status. But otherwise, um, TechSoup will, will do the eligibility validation just like we do for the regular software donations that flow through our own website, only the donation you'll be receiving uh, comes directly from Microsoft. So that's, um, that's how this offer differs from the, the normal Microsoft software offerings that uh, you can receive through TechSoup. However, we do have many complementary products and additional resources. Of course, to run Office 365, you still need an operating system. And we have Windows 7 and Windows 8. And I believe uh, Windows 7, a minimum of Windows 7 is what's recommended for organizations wanting to migrate to Office 365. So we have those products available for donation as always. And you can request those. And it's a separate allocation from what you would um, be requesting from Microsoft directly for Office 365. In addition, if you request the uh, E1 offer, it, that offer does not come with the installed versions of Office. Um, or if you need to upgrade, as Linda mentioned earlier, you may need to upgrade your Outlook. Um, those products are still available through TechSoup, and you would request those as you normally would through the Microsoft Software Donation Program through TechSoup. Um, so those are some of the complementary products. We also have several articles as, uh, on our website. As Becky mentioned, we have a couple of webinars coming up that will 
dive deeper into Office 365 and the different plans and the different um, you know, how you can figure out whether it's right for you. And we also have a forum thread uh, that's dedicated to Office 365. So if you have some specific questions, sometimes uh, we get more technical questions that come through there that we can forward on to Microsoft and get answers for you. And that way the entire community can, can take advantage of the questions and answers that are being asked. So those are some of the resources that we have. Um, the next slides are uh, screenshots of the article that we have um, on our website. And if you are, are looking at that article, you can see along the side that they have related, related information, articles, and how-tos. And then on the following slide, we have um, lists of the webinars, related webinars, and of course there's a whole comparison of the various plans. There's also a link in there to uh, a list of Office 365 migration and uh, implementation consultants like Tech Impact. There are other Tech Impact itself is a nonprofit, and there are a couple of other nonprofit groups like Tech Impact that work to do Office 365 migration. So those are a bunch of resources that we have on our site that are available to you. Um, and that is pretty much uh, wraps it up for me. And so I'll let you guys get to the, the Q&A. Great. Thanks so much Cameron for that quick rundown. So we have, um, so Charlene asks, how long does it take to receive eligibility? How long is that process once you start the free trial to know whether or not you're eligible? Well, it can be as fast as instantaneous. If you're already in our database and have been validated or we've interacted with you in, um, within the last uh, 18 months, you should be able to walk through the process um, directly and get validated immediately. If you're brand new to TechSoup, if we don't know who you are, for example, faith-based organizations, churches, and other religious organizations have just um, been made eligible for Office 365 and for the TechSoup donation program. So many churches are not yet in our database, and we would need to reach out to those organizations to perform the validation work. Uh, so it, it, you know, of course, uh, we, we try to turn those around as quickly as possible. It depends on how responsive the organizations are in getting back to us. In a perfect world, you would go through immediately, and your organization would be validated immediately. Otherwise, there can be some back and forth, and it can take up to a week to two weeks. Great. So for folks who may already be using Office 365 and have purchased it without any sort of donation or discount through Microsoft, how do they go about transitioning to the donated version, or if they want E3 discounted version? Cameron, can you tackle that one? Yeah, absolutely. So those organizations that are using the, the existing commercial offer will need to go through the application process for the charity offer through the Office 365 website on Microsoft.com. Um, so you would follow that, that same application process, um, same as any other organization that would be new to Office 365. The difference would be once your organization is validated, you'll be able to log into your um, Office 365 portal and change your licenses, switch them over so that the pricing would switch either to the donated, uh, fully donated or the discounted offer. Great. So here's a question for Linda. Marlena asks, if you don't have the desktop apps like Office 2013 or 2010 installed, and you lose your Internet connection and Office 365 goes down, are you not able to work? or is there another way to access? Um, you can still work. If your documents are saved on SharePoint Online, you can still work on SharePoint Online if your desktop computer goes down. Was that the question? Well, if you lose your Internet connection, what happens oh, if you, lose if your you internet, can't get yeah. to the Internet? If you lose your Internet connection, you can still work on any document that you've saved in SkyDrive because it's synced to your local computer. And then once the Internet connection comes back, it will synchronize your changes. Your SharePoint will not be available. You'll have to find Internet access to get to SharePoint. But that's kind of a, the beauty of the another benefit of the cloud, right? If your organization loses Internet connectivity, you can actually just go someplace else and still get to your stuff. Whereas if you lose Internet connectivity, um, if you lose network connectivity in your office and you can't get to your server, you can't get to it no matter what. 
Great. Thank you. So a question for James. Um, Cindy asks, since Office 365 is a subscription, will we, will we be charged for it next year? Or is the intention and hope to continue offering this as a donation? Yeah, the, uh, the idea is that this will be uh, a, a donation for forever, basically. I, I don't envision us kind of revoking the donation status of this. Great. And I can add to that also. Um, when organizations sign up, you sign up for a one-year subscription. Then you're asked to renew annually, but your, uh, your pricing should not change. And then after two years, you will be asked to be revalidated. So TechSoup will be taking another look at your organization to make sure you are, you're still uh, a 501 3 that you're still in the activity that you had initially um, uh, applied in. Uh, so we just go through a revalidation process, but again, it should something that happens on the back end, and the renewal should not um, be affected by that unless something has changed with your organization. Great. Thank you, Cameron. And just as a last question for Linda, I, I know we're at the top of the hour, so I want to wrap up. But for Linda, it sounds like this is a difficult thing to implement. Do we need to have a firm like Tech Impact to use Office 365? Or is there, is there a way for us to get started without necessarily launching in with a consultant? Sure. It's, um, you can do it yourself. An organization can do it themselves, but you really should either educate yourself through – Microsoft has a lot of documentation online to um, help you through the process of translating your e uh, converting your email system and that. But it really does take a lot of education and thought and planning on your part. So if you want to undertake this yourself, um, you can do it, but most organizations um, probably benefit from talking to a technical expert, one that has done Office 365 implementations before, you know, before making the decision. It's Great. something Thanks that you so want much, to Linda. do right. Yeah, you want to do it right. You definitely don't want to have to do it twice. Great, and you know that's also. You know, plug for you've got a 30-day free trial to look at before you do anything more with it um, to play around and see maybe you do have some IT folks in-house that can help you implement it, or you do have a consultant you're already working with that can help. Um, so definitely look at the resources available. We'll be sending a follow-up email out later on this afternoon with links to all of these different resources. And again, please join us for the next two webinars, one on October 22nd, I'm sorry, one on October 10th, and then the third one on October 22nd, and we'll include links to those as well. Sorry we didn't get to answer all the questions today. There were hundreds, so we will try to point some of them to our community forums, and you'll receive a link to where you can continue the conversation there. I'd like to thank quickly our two presenters, James and Linda, for their terrific high-level presentation today. And also our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, who provides the use of their platform for us to present these events to you regularly. So please take a moment to complete the follow-up survey once it pops up on your screen so we can continue to improve our webinar program, and join us next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>